A Cruel Angel's Thesis, perhaps one of the most iconic anime openings of all time. Nearly every anime fan, regardless of whether or not they have seen Neon Genesis Evangelion, is familiar with this song. As is the case with most things in Evangelion, there is a lot to be unpacked in this opening sequence, in terms of not only the lyrics and music, but also in the visuals which accompany it. I'm going to go into as much detail as possible to teach you everything you need to know, and much more, about this ever so popular opening. Before I begin, I would first like to give a shout out to the Ava Geeks website, which is the source of most of the information that I will be referencing. In addition, I will be referring to something called Eva Tomo no Kai multiple times, so I will clarify right now what that is. Eva Tomo no Kai, also known as Eva Fan Club, are a series of newsletters that were released with the original video and Laserdisc release of Neon Genesis Evangelion in Japan. I also think that this is a good opportunity to say that there will be Evangelion spoilers. Finally, I would like to make clear one common misconception about Evangelion, and that is that despite all of the religious, often Christian imagery, the intention was in no way for Evangelion to be any sort of propaganda about religion. The assistant director of the show, Kazuya Tsurumaki, said in an interview in 2001, There are a lot of giant robot shows in Japan, and we did want our story to have a religious theme to help distinguish us. Because Christianity is an uncommon religion in Japan, we thought it would be mysterious. None of the staff who worked on Eva are Christians. There is no actual Christian meaning to the show, we just thought the visual symbols of Christianity looked cool. If we had known the show would get distributed in the US and Europe, we might have rethought that choice. It is also important to note that all of my and everyone's analysis and theories about the imagery and symbolism is to be taken with a grain of salt, as Anno made it very clear in interviews that religious and philosophical references were used for the specific purpose of looking cool and to make Anno and company appear intelligent. Now, without further ado, Let's dive into some fun facts about the production of this opening. According to the booklet released alongside the soundtrack album, Refrain of Evangelion, Hideaki Anno, the director of the series, wished for the opening theme to be from Alexander Borodin's work, Palofzian Dances. The opera from which this work comes, Prince Igor, was left unfinished due to the composer's death in 1887. However, a performing version of the work was prepared by Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov and Alexander Glazunov in 1890. The reason that this piece was not used as the opening theme for the show was because the TV station, TV Tokyo, expressed a concern that the classical piece would confuse viewers as it would be unclear for the starting of a TV anime show. The lyricist for the song, Oikawa Neko, wrote the famous lyrics in two hours after looking through the idea proposal for the show and viewing unfinished footage of the first two episodes of the show on Fast Forward. Because of this, most of the analysis that I will be doing will be of the visuals rather than the lyrics. The inspiration for the title of the song came from the manga A Cruel God Reigns, and she was told by the producer to ensure that the wording sounded sophisticated and philosophical. In the original version of the song, there was a male chorus, but Anno requested it be removed to emphasize maternal affection, also according to the aforementioned booklet. Interestingly, while production of episode 1 of the show was completed by April 1995 and episode 2 in May, the opening and ending sequences were not finalized until September. This might explain the apparent lack of Asuka appearances in the opening, who only shows up a total of two times during the sequence, compared to 13 appearances from Eva Unit 1, 12 from Shinji, 9 from Misato, 8 from Rei, 5 from Gendo, and 4 from Ritsuko. I am now going to move into a closer analysis of each cut from the opening, as well as the accompanying lyrics. I will be using Miyuki Takayama's translation of the lyrics, which is regarded as a good and accurate translation. According to Takayama, when ADV, which is ADV Films, who are responsible for the first dub of Evangelion, translated this song, they decided to change the words so that the English translation could be sung to the beat of the original song, commonly known as dub titling. But in the process of changing the translation to fit the beat of the song, they had to take rather big liberties with it until their translation was no longer correct. This very first cut, the first we see of Neon Genesis Evangelion, was described in the storyboards as representing the beginning of the universe. It also has a similar appearance to a drop of water falling into a larger pool. The universe of Evangelion begins with this iconic shot, representing the birth of a grand story while also remaining humble in its imagery of being but a small drop of the ocean. The lyrics begin here. Before the show even begins, we are introduced to the idea of angels, 
which traditionally are depicted as beings of goodness and purity, being depicted here as more antagonistic figures, which we will see become a major theme throughout the entirety of the show. Along with a large letter spelling out Gainax, which is the animation company behind Neon Genesis Evangelion, we see a red universe fade in from a black scene. This is the first instance of a motif of nebulous red being used in the opening sequence. What we see here is not entirely clear. According to Eva Tomo no Kai, the graphical figure that appears in the red universe is like a cherub. In traditional Catholic belief, cherubim are the second to highest ranking choir of angel. In biblical tradition, when the cherubim are spread throughout the Garden of Eden, it becomes their duty to prevent Adam and Eve from approaching the Tree of Life. While cherubs do, like the figure we see here, have a multitude of eyes, they are also described to have four wings, while the one depicted here appears to have twelve. According to the Legends of the Jews by Lois Ginsburg, there was one seraph, Samael, which was the greatest of the angels in heaven, with twelve wings instead of six like all the others. The face in the center of this figure resembles that of Sakiel from the TV series, and also shows up a few other places later on in the show, including on Gagiel and on Evangelion Unit 1. Here we have a transition using a star field with a glowing center, which according to many Evangelion speculators is representative of a connection being made between the Eva's soul and its pilots. Next, we have a depiction of the Sephirotic Tree of Life, from Utriusque Cosmi Maioris Schilichet et Minoris Metaphysica Physica Atque Technica Historia by Robert Flood. The lyrics continue. <laughs> According to Takeyama Miyuki's translator notes from the song, the word Shinwa actually means myth, legend would be densetsu, but I think it sounds better as legend. This second cut of the opening, which started with the Starfield transition, has quite little in common with its initial storyboard incarnation. According to Eva Tomo no Kai, the same image of the flickering light appears in episode 16 and episode 20. Both times, it is just before Shinji's return to the real world from the entry plug. Perhaps it is the image seen by an embryo inside its mother's womb of the light coming in from the outside world. Moving on to the third cut, we have the iconic flash of the title and logo. The literal translation of the title, Shinseiki Evangelion, would be New Century Evangelion. Some people incorrectly think that this alternate title was created for ADV films, but the truth is that this was planned from the beginning, as evidenced by the fact that Neon Genesis Evangelion appears in every single episode. What exactly does Neon Genesis Evangelion mean, though? To say that it is an English translation wouldn't be exactly correct, since it's not exactly English. Neon is a form of the Greek word neos, meaning new, and genesis means a birth, or an origin. Evangelion comes from the classical Greek word euangelion, which means a reward for bringing of good news, or the good news itself. This term is further derived from euangelos, which combines the prefix eu, meaning good, and angelos, meaning messenger. Nowadays, this translation of good news has become heavily associated with the Christian gospel, which is why sometimes Evangelion is simply translated as gospel. All this is to say that the most literal translation of Neon Genesis Evangelion would be New Birth Gospel, which is not exactly as catchy as the title we all know and love. Here we now see our beloved protagonist for the first time, accompanied by the nude silhouettes of Asuka and Rei. What's interesting to note here is that despite being depicted nude, Asuka still has the Eva Sync clips on her head, which we will also see in episode 22. The lyrics continue. An interesting note about the lyrics here is that in the Evangelion Edition album, there is a version of the opening sung by the voice actors of Misato, Rei, and Asuka. Asuka sings the line, You are merely gazing at me and smiling, at the same time that Shinji turns toward Asuka and smiles. Perhaps Anno and Gainax are already alluding to Asuka being paired with Shinji here. As we see a silhouette of Misato's hand accompanied by another depiction of the Sephirotic Tree of Life, we hear the lyrics. So 
The lyrics here are often associated with Misato, who we will see many times throughout the series is very intent on seeking out this gentle touch. As we now see more of Misato's figure, as well as her face as it turns up to look at us, the lyrics go on. We can now see Misato's full silhouette here, as Shinji's face sternly appears. It's interesting to note that she is, similar to Asuka and Rei previously, portrayed nude. Perhaps this is because they are trying to depict them in their truest human form, something for which nudity is often a symbol. It could be a symbol of broken barriers, or AT fields, that we will see throughout the show. Otherwise, perhaps it's simply trying to show us the sexual way in which Shinji often views these characters. Now, in contrast to what we have seen so far, Rei is depicted wearing her school uniform. With the way that Shinji and Rei are positioned, the impression is given that Shinji is looking at Rei through a window, which could symbolize the distance that is put between the two characters. Rei is almost unreachable, despite being in direct view. At the time that the frame quickly shifts up to a close-up of Rei's eye is when we hear the vocalist mention the innocent eyes. An interesting point is made by Yoshiyuki Sadamoto, the illustrator and writer of the Evangelion manga, as well as the character designer for the TV show. In an interview in the second volume of the manga, he says, There were two things that went into the decision to make her eyes red. One is the fact that she didn't have enough outstanding features, and the second is from a business standpoint. The makers of the game wanted her differentiated from the other characters, but personally, I think it turned out to have a great effect. She's so quiet, you can only tell her character from her gaze and her facial expressions, so she leaves the impression of having a strong stare. Here, we now see an entry plug being inserted. The shot cuts to the interior plate of the entry plug, showing us the date 2014. While we know that the story of Neon Genesis Evangelion takes place in 2015, this is the first of many date references throughout the show. Now, we see the entry plug internal time counter. It's important to note here that English is usually considered to be the universal language of science, which is why many of the instruments used at NERV are in both English and Japanese. In addition, the markings on all of the Evangelion units, be they from Germany, China, or the US, are all in English. Next, we see Shinji's head pushing against the lever inside his Evangelion. The monitor display, here shown from a very strange angle, a trademark of Anno's, flashes from red to green. This is one of the countless times that Anno's directing style comes through very clearly in the show. The classic pan up of Shinji in his pilot seat, cutting to him raising his head up. The lyrics are... I'll use this cut to describe how Yoshiyuki Sadamoto explained the design process for Shinji. Finally, I tried for a look where you could see the forehead through his bangs, shorter hair, the look of a boyish young girl. Speaking in concrete terms, his eyes are a girl's eyes. I drew them exactly as I drew Nadia's eyes. He's a male Nadia, just as if I had given Nadia a masculine makeover. Lengthen the eyelashes and change the hairstyle, and you have Nadia. Sadamoto is of course talking about Nadia from Fushigi no Umi no Nadia, or Nadia the Secret of Blue Water, which is another show by Gainax and Anno that Sadamoto did the design for. Now we finally see Eva Unit 1, slowly raising her face. It's a pretty epic introduction to the figure, with a silhouetted background, with a bright, lit-up eye giving it an ominous presence. Now we get to the fun part of this, the very fast flashing images, cutting between all sorts of shots of characters and scenes. Many of the images that are shown during this sequence are actually some of the only images that Gainax had allowed fan websites to use for free. Starting off this rapid-fire collage is Gendo, classically with his head lowered and his hand raised up to his glasses menacingly. Next up is Misato, with her very serious expression. The next couple of shots are all of the characters' faces in the center of the frame, making for an interesting experience of seeing the characters' faces in rapid succession in the exact same spot. Misato is followed then by Ritsuko and Rei. The lyrics during this part are... We now see Evangelion Unit 1 in all of her glory, sprouting her wings behind her. We next see Eva Unit 1 opens her mouth. 
According to the Neon Genesis Evangelion New Type 100% Collection, a 178-page art book in A4 format, Eva 1's mouth is actually bolted shut with a horizontal peg at the front teeth, and the pieces flying out is the destroyed bolt. The next hand shot we see here is that of Eva 1. Fast cut to another scary shot of a close-up of Unit 1's face, with the classic bright white eyes. Here we can actually see Eva 1's four nostril holes, which otherwise aren't usually as apparent as they are on other units. Cut back once again to Unit 1's hand. This time, it is covered in red blood. The hand is shown moving here in this cut in the opening only, which is never actually seen during the show. Test Type This shot of Unit 1's feet is never actually seen in the show, but it is likely in reference to episodes 16 and 18. The chorus begins here. The word teze here is the Japanese spelling or pronunciation of teze, which is German for thesis. Eva 01. In Japanese, Unit 1 is just known as Shogoki, which translates more accurately to something like first unit, but Anno doesn't always translate literally into English, as we have seen many times already. This very cool shot of Unit 1 turning around is taken from cut 266 in episode 2. However, According to the original storyboard plans, this was supposed to be 260 instead. Here I will talk a bit about the design of the Evangelions. There are some theories which state that the first four units are based off of the four barons of hell from Judeo-Christian mythology, but there isn't any evidence that would support this other than a few design similarities. In an interview with Anno from Ariel magazine in 1996, he says, There's a monster in Japan called the Oni. It has two horns sticking out of its head, and the overall image of the Eva is based on that. I also wanted to give the impression that beneath this robot monster image is not so much a robot, but a giant human. We can see the similarities quite clearly in Anno's early designs for Evas. Ikuto Yamashita ultimately finished the design of the Evas, and in an interview in the first volume of the manga, he says, So why did the Evangelion wind up with that shape? The director instructed me to make the image of an oni, a giant just barely under the control of mankind. I get the feeling I've seen that correlation before. The image I had for the design concept was the fairy tale, Gulliver's Travels, enormous power restrained. What I came up with was a giant that looks like a relief on a wall. I happily discarded the efficiency and feeling of giant size that you can guess at by sight alone. After the designs were handed in, it caused a stir, even among the staff. Positive and negative opinions were flying, and from here on out, I imagine it will cause a stir among comic readers and animation viewers. As with many things in Evangelion, it is far from uncommon for a stir to be caused. The design of the Evangelion units are far from any mecha designs we have seen previously. They are more sinuous and flowing compared to the traditional boxy and robust designs of robots from earlier. Here we see the face of the third angel, Sakio. This face is seen several times outside of Strictly on Sakio, its owl-like design coming to largely represent angels altogether. Why an owl? Well, of course everything in Evangelion is speculation, but there are instances of angels being described like owls in religious texts. In Isaiah 34 verse 14 in the Bible, the word Lilith is often translated as screech owl or nocturnal animal that inhabits desolate places. Now we see Unit 1 enveloped by flames. An interesting note about the positioning of this frame is that it is preceded by the previous symbol of the angels, and as we will see in the next cut, is followed by a shot of a core of an angel. Here we see very close up the core of an angel. The lines on it are mysterious. Perhaps they are a reflection of something, or maybe they are something within the core. Absolute Terror Field This is actually the only place in the show in which we see the true name of the AT Fields, Everywhere else it appears in the series, it is referred to only as AT fields, with the exception of external sources and texts. An important note is that AT fields really don't have anything to do with psychology, as it is a term that explicitly appears in reference to Evangelion. Here we see Kaoru, the last angel, entirely in red. He is the only character other than Yui to not be rendered in full color. Rei is now seen with her back to the moon. As is quite apparent throughout the series, 
Ray has a quite strong connection to the moon, and this is the first time we are introduced to this idea. It's interesting to note the order in which things are appearing here. Ray and Kaoru are shown in succession, following a bunch of angelic symbols, and are followed by angels. Quite interesting. The Japanese term that is used for angels is shito, which means more literally apostle or disciple. The word tenshi, which I'm sure you recognize from the opening lines of the opening song, would be the closer word to the English word angel. This is another example of Anno choosing an interesting translation. We are now introduced to a panoramic view of Tokyo 3, followed by the name of the city. In Japanese, the city is actually called Daisan Shin Tokyo Shi, which actually translates to Third New Tokyo City. In their Platinum subtitles, which is one of the three subtitle official releases that ADV Films put out, along with VHS and Perfect Collection, they actually changed Tokyo 3 to New Tokyo 3. The next lyrics are... The view shifts from Tokyo 3 to an external shot of Nerf headquarters, followed by Nerf's logo. Nerf is actually the German word for nerve. The end of Evangelion theatrical program says about the logo. The figure is half of a fig leaf. It hardly needs to be said that the fig leaf symbolizes the original sin entangling Adam and Eve and brings to mind the humans who ate of the fruit of wisdom. Why half? It might be in reference to how the angels and humanity each represent one half of the whole, humans as the fruit of wisdom, with angels as the fruit of life. The quote underneath it, God's in his heaven, all's right with the world, comes from a poem by Robert Browning entitled Pippa's Song. The specific passage goes like this. The years at the spring, and days at the morn. Mornings at seven, the hillsides dew pearled, the larks on the wing, the snails on the thorn, God's in his heaven, all's right with the world. Now begins the portion of the opening where characters' faces are shown on opposite sides of the frame, unlike before where they were all in the center. Fuyutsuki is the first we see here on the left side. Here we see a black and white map of Tokyo 3, represented by the squares on the western side along with the surrounding area. The next character we see, now on the right side of the screen, is Hyuga, followed by Aoba. Now we see Maya in the center of the frame. Interesting that she ended up in the center here, considering how much more popular she was with a lot of the fan base compared to other characters who had the same or less screen time than she did. Perhaps Gainax knew what they were doing, and that's why she's in the center here. This is now the inside of Nerf's HQ center. This specific shot is from a panning shot of the tactical command room that is used many times throughout the series. Technically, according to drawings from production, Command Center is actually only the top tier of this place, while the entire thing is referred to as the Command Tower. It is apparent here, through the resemblance to World War II era battleships, how Anno is a big fan of these types of naval vessels. Now back to the characters being shown on the side, we see Kaji, followed by Ritsuko. The next symbol we see is the Crest of Sele. This symbol is also found on Lilith's mask, though it is never made apparent why. The seven eyes on it could be a reference to the seven eyes of God, which are mentioned in Zechariah 3 verse 9 and Revelation 5 verse 6 in the Bible. The triangle is a shape that is often used to represent God due to its importance in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Similarly to the symbol for Nerve, this crest is also cut in half, though here both sides are included. It's not clear why the crest is depicted in this rainbow color scheme. This version of the symbol is a bit different from what we see in the storyboards, where the organization it is said to represent is called Essene, rather than Sele. Essene has a bit more specific religious undertones to it. According to an article on crystallinks.com, the Essene Brotherhood had its inception at the time of Melchizedek, the great spiritual master who lived on this planet around 1973 BC and was the incarnation of Jesus. The development of the Essene Brotherhood over the next 2,000 years is embodied in the development of the Jewish religion. The Essenes were a Jewish sect representing an esoteric aspect of Judaism, or Jewish mysticism. The Jewish mystics studied the Kabbalah, which taught belief in reincarnation, astrology, channeling, prophecy, soul travel, psychic development, and angels, and which organized itself around the Tree of Life. In addition to this, the Essenes are who are most often credited with the creation of the Dead Sea Scrolls. 
Gendo is shown once again, this time with a smug smile, again with his head tilted slightly forward. Now we see Chairman Kyo. Originally in the storyboards, this was going to be a side profile shot of Gendo. This is the front cover of the Human Instrumentality Project 17th Interim Report. The translation of what is shown here is Top Secret, Human Instrumentality Project, International Alliance Supreme Executive Council, 17th Interim Report, Human Instrumentality Committee, 2015 Business Plan Outline, Summary. Another shot of Gendo, this time in his younger years. While unconfirmed, there are rumors that the cut showing a young Ikari Gendo during the opening credits is based on a similar shot of Stracker, the commander of Shadow in the UFO TV series. While this could be the case, it is quite vague and hard to find anything that could be an exact parallel. This sketchy art style that we see here is often used to portray characters in the past. Now we see an embryonic cut of Adam. Interesting that it is in between two shots of Gendo. Next is this extremely iconic shot of Gendo's smile, nearly hidden by his gloved hands in front of his face. Here is Evangelion Unit Zero, otherwise known in Japanese as Serogoki. The lyrics continue. A translator's note here says, Atsui, hot, can also mean intense or passionate. Pathos is the quality or power in life or art of evoking a feeling of pity or compassion, or pity, or suffering, sorrow. Now we are shown the text indicating the name of what we just saw. Evangelion Unit 2, or Nigoki, is now shown striking a dynamic pose with her prog knife. In a similar fashion to the previous cuts, we now see production model Eva 02. Here's Rei again, this time in her entry plug leaning forward. This cut, cut 056, is actually not used in the opening at all. What we see here is Unit 2's prog knife cutting across the front of the camera. Now we finally see Asuka, fully rendered in color inside of her entry plug. This is actually the only time in the entire opening sequence that we see her in full color. The next characters we see are Toji, shown on the left, and Kensuke on the right. Hikari is now shown on the left for a bit longer than either Toji or Kensuke were in their frames. I wonder if they positioned her in the same place as Toji on purpose. A big explosion. It's not clear where this is or why it's blowing up, but it looks pretty cool. Continuing on the theme introduced by the previous cut, we now see Unit 1's pallet gun flash in gunfire. I will touch on this cut momentarily. Another explosion is shown here, followed by Ava Unit 1 doing a rotating jump and then flying into the foreground. This stationary shot is recycled a number of times throughout the show, ending in a very cool close-up of the unit's eye. It's interesting to note how the eye looks here, noting that they are yellow instead of green. Cut 063 is actually a combination of the storyboarded 063 and 064, with 063 being the explosion and 064 being Evangelion Unit 1 jumping toward the camera. As we see Gendo looking down on us, or on Baby Shinji as we will see in the following cut, we hear the following lyrics. Following the previous shot of Gendo disapprovingly looking at us, we now see a crying baby Shinji shown from above. Here we see Misato sideways, nude from the waist up. This could be a depiction of her as she sees herself, lonely and fragile, or it could be from Shinji's point of view as a woman whom he physically longs for. I think that it is more of the former, considering the way that she is covering the area on her chest where her scar is, likely a symbol of her trying to conceal some of her deeper scars. Not only that, but we will also see in the following cuts, the next few images have much to do with the second impact where she received her physical scar. Here we see Misato's pendant. Compositionally, this frame is drawing the viewer's eye to the center where the cross is, with the light versus dark contrast further drawing your attention. We see virtual symmetry here made up with the zipper on the left being contrasted by her hair on the right. Here we see the word second impact colored in red as opposed to almost all the other text, which is in white. Here the giant of light is shown turning around. This shot of Adam recurs many times in the series, and gives us a pretty good hint as to the true nature of the Evangelions. It's interesting that it is shown with the shoulder bindings, since we know that those are not organic and were added to the units by Nerve. 
This is the second time we see Adam, despite the fact that Lilith is never seen in the opening sequence. This is a satellite image of the South Pole at the time of the second impact, which is seen a few times in the show. Now we see Ray holding her legs and looking at the camera, probably around five years old. For some unknown reason, she is shown here next to a glass in the spotlight with her. Eva Tomo no Kai notes, Could this be Ray from several years back? This image doesn't appear in the actual show. It may be hinting at how Ray was brought up in an experimental facility like Locale. Another sketchy art style here is used to depict a young Yui, which is interesting considering that this shot follows a young shot of Ray. Also interesting is what follows this shot of Yui, which is a shot of Eva Unit 1's face, shown partially naked. Adam now flashes on the screen, which is interesting considering that it does not directly follow the shots of Adam, which we just saw. This text is shown in black, with a white background, which is the only time these colors are used in the opening. Ritsuko is shown from a side profile here. Almost every time Ritsuko is shown in the opening, she is looking away from the camera and appears to be in deep thought, which is likely indicative of her contemplative and mentally unstable nature. This is a monitor screen of a DNA map. Specifically, what we see here is the blood type of the sixth angel, Gagio. This particular shot will appear again in episodes 9 and 25. Misato is shown getting up. This shot was spread between cuts 077 and 078 in the storyboards for some reason. There is a similarity between this cut and that of Shinji in cut 081, which we will see shortly, probably in reference to the fact that Ano wanted Shinji and Misato to be depicted as the two central protagonists of the series, and in many ways as counterparts of each other. This next sketched image is of Misato, Kaji, and Ritsuko in their younger days. This is likely representing a photograph based on the context in which this particular image is shown in episode 21. Here we are shown the name of the director of the series, Hideaki Anno. In ADV's pre-platinum releases, the kanji are simply painted out and replaced with the English credits. Then we see Eva Unit 1 spreading her arms with Shinji overlapping on top. While Unit 1 stays stationary in the shot, Shinji is shown being propelled forward, perhaps indicating that he is being expelled from the Evangelion. Stylistically, this shot is very similar to cut 010, and it could also be seen as a continuation of cut 017, but this time without the majestic wings. We hear the lyrics during this cut. The translator's notes say, Sora, sky, is the reading given for the kanji for Uchu, universe. Shinji is shown here in his official art style, turning with a very serious face. The lyrics complement this by wrapping up, saying, Shinji is seen shouting in profile, likely shouting his trademark phrase, I can't do it. Shinji is now seen trying to avoid a bright light, similar to shots we will see in episodes 1 and 19. Now here is a very rare sight. Shinji with a genuine smile on his face. It almost makes you think that Shinji might be an optimistic character. And here is the final cut from the opening. Enigmatic characters shown in a close-up of a page from the Dead Sea Scrolls possessed by Sele. According to the storyboard, these markings are supposed to represent angelic script. There is a real script known as the angelic script, or as the celestial alphabet, and while these characters bear some resemblance to this alphabet, they do not match anything specifically. Well, that's it. Before wrapping up, I do want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor for today, the Mugcord Media Conglomerate. The Mugcord Media Conglomerate is an unlimited liability company which specializes in analysis and deconstruction of popular franchises and titles spreading across countless forms of media, including Japanese animation and culinary arts. Visit www.mugcord.wixsite.com slash sharing to learn more. The link is in the description. I hope everyone enjoyed this analysis, and I hope you were able to learn something exciting today. Stay tuned, maybe I'll do some more Evangelion analysis in the future. Da 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 da
Do 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 do